Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about solving quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. Now, there's tons of ways to solve quadratics, and if you forgot, just for whatever reason, uh, a quadratic equation, or a quadratic uh, function anyway, is any function that has x squared as its, or the equivalent to x squared as its largest term. Now, the big deal here, and there'll usually be some constant term there, the big deal here is that the number or the coefficient on x squared in the most standard of forms is actually represented by the letter A. So I would write it in this form as, if I get it to pen to work, A x squared, it's just the coefficient of the number in front of x squared is A, plus B x, so whatever number's in front of x is the B, plus C, that would be the constant term. Now, we're going to use the A, B, and C uh, in the quadratic formula. And by the way, the uh, internet has like a trillion different songs about learning the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula. So just find one that gets stuck in your head like you can't get it out and then learn it. It'll be to your benefit to know what it is. But anyway, I'm not going to to create a song about it, so not in this time. So just find somebody who you like. So I would say that the first part of the quadratic formula, I should say, is negative b. But really, it should be opposite b. Opposite b means that the sign is different. So that way, if your uh, b value, say you have negative 3x, well, you don't want to write negative b here because you'd be negative times negative, so it'd end up being positive. So it's easier just to get in your head that it's opposite b. That would make it make much more sense. And for there, we want to deal with plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, and all of that is over 2a. That's the quadratic formula, so we'll use that today to solve some of the quadratics. And I should say, solution-wise, for the most part, if I was going to solve graphically, I'm looking at where it interacts with this x-axis. Those are my solutions. That's what I'm looking for. So let's get to a few of them, shall we? So in this one, I have 4v squared plus av plus 3. Now, to me, the smartest move here is just to make a little list for yourself, writing down what a, b, and c are. It will save you tons of headaches later. a is 4, b is 8, c is 3. And it takes two seconds to write that down. The next step that I would do is write out the quadratic formula. Now, over the course of time, Writing out the quadratic formula, if you do it a lot in Algebra 2 or Algebra 1 or wherever you are, uh, you'll probably, by not writing it down, you'll probably save a grand total of like five minutes your entire life, unless you go on to use it a lot. Uh, but if you don't write it down and you make careless mistakes with it a lot, it's possible that you'll fail the course and have to go back in and take it again. So I always say that the 20 minutes you save by not writing stuff down throughout the semester is not worth the potential of the 90 days to 180 days of taking the course over, so just do yourself a favor. Write some things down. Now from here, I can make my transition into a, solution, a solvable setup. So I'm going to do with negative 8, because it says negative b, so that's, you know, why wouldn't I? There we go, negative 8. Color finally changed. Plus or minus, square root. Uh, b here would be 8. I If this was negative, I'd always put that in parentheses. The reason is because this and this are two different things. And this is the right one when you're, uh, inst when you're plugging something in or you're substituting. Um, just like if you have negative x and you have to substitute in a negative, it's in your best interest to do this. And then when you plug in that negative 3 or whatever, you'll get the correct answer. It's really one of those personal preference things, but it makes a lot more sense. Uh, the reason that they're different, by the way, is because the one in parentheses tells you mathematically to do negative 8 times negative 8. On the other hand, uh, due to order of operations, the negative 8 squared tells you to square the 8 first, tack on the negative later. So do yourself a favor, get in the habit of putting those things in parentheses, save yourself a lot of heartache. If you're the type to heartache over math, I don't know. Um, so 3 here. Over 2 times 4. Now I'm going to pop out this part underneath the parentheses just to give you a quick look at where I'm going with it. 64 minus 4 times 4 is 16 times 3 is 48. And when you do uh, a little bit of, uh, certainly a little bit of grand subtraction here, you'll end up with 16. So that's 
where that's going to come from in the very next step that I write down. So I'm dealing with negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 16 over 8, because 2 times 4 is, of course, 8. Now I'm dealing with two problems. The first problem is negative 8 plus, the square root of 16 is 4, by the way, plus 4 over 8. And the other one is negative 8 minus 4 over 8. So in the first case, negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 8, since 4 goes into 8 two times, is negative 1 over 2. Similarly, negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12 divided by 8. 4 goes into 8 twice, it goes into 12 three times, so you end up with negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to put that final answer in these curvy brackets here because that will show my audience that I'm working in a solution. And by audience, I mean teacher or whoever's looking at your stuff. So that's a nice curvy bracket setup. Let's look at another one. The next one has a little bit of a different look to it. This one does not have the linear term. Now, I will tell you now that personally, I would not solve this method using quadratic equation, I'm going to, but if I was doing it myself, I would add 25 to both sides and just solve it using by taking square roots. I mean, how easy was that? But instead of that, I'm going to do quadratic equation. So what would happen? How would you do it? Well, you could just add in the fact that there's no linear term. Now I have what I need, so I'm going to make my list A, B, and C. A is 1. If you don't see anything, it's 1, because there, there is an x squared there. I know there is. And if there doesn't say that there's 2 or 3, it means there's 1 there. Just FYI. 0 and negative 25. This is very important. The negative 25 will play a huge role in this problem, because if you don't get that part correct, you're doomed. There's my formula. So for the next one, uh, negative 0. And you could put 0 plus or minus, and that's what I'll do just for this step. But after that, the 0 doesn't mean anything. It's just a reference point. It doesn't even have a sign on it. So 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 25. Don't just put 25 there. It's going to go in the wrong direction and then 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Now, once again, I'm going to sort of pop out this section here. I'm dealing with 0. The issue is negative 4 times negative 25, which is how you should treat it. I always sort of square it first, and then treat whatever sign is here as if it's on the, the number, on the 4. So if it's plus, I always say positive 4. And if it's negative, I always say, uh, sorry, if it's minus, I always say negative 4. So in this case, negative 4 times negative 25 is plus 100. So you're dealing with 100 being uh, what would be later known as the discriminant. So for the next step, I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of the 0 because I don't need it anymore, plus or minus the square root of 100 over 2. And of course, the square root of 100 is 10. So my final answer steps, as we're moving in that direction, would be 10 divided by 2 and then negative 10 divided by 2. But of course you want to simplify those fractions to 5 and negative 5. And we figured out earlier that those that, that was the right answer by doing the solving by square roots, but that's kind of how it would go if you have to solve by quadratic equation. But like I said, it's not always the best method. It always works, but it's not always the best method. So in this one, the only thing that's weird about it from the start is that it doesn't have the zero on the right side of the equation or the left side of the equation. You could have zero equals 5a squared plus 7a plus whatever and you're fine. As long as zero is all by itself, you can use quadratic equation. So I need to get rid of this minus 8 on both sides. So this becomes 5a squared plus 7a plus 10 equals 0. Now I've got what I need to make my list. a equals 5, b equals 7, and c equals 10. So now I just go back in and start setting up my equation again.
So for here, my next thing I need to deal with is plugging stuff in, so negative 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared here would be 7 squared minus 4 times 1, which is, or 4 times 5, sorry, 4 times a is what I meant to say instead of 1, and then c would be 10 over 2 times 5. So as I've, has been my system so far, I'm going to kick this out and say it's 49 minus, so you're dealing with 4 times 5, and then on top of that as an added bonus it's times 10, so you're looking at 200, which means we'll probably have some weird little moment here where I end up with a negative number. So I'm doing 49 minus 200, which is negative 151. That's going to be what's underneath my square root here. Well, that's how bad that plus minus looks now. So going back over to the problem, I'm dealing with negative 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 151 over 10. Now for here, negative 151 is one of those things where you could try plugging in some squares to see if you can get anything to happen for you. It's not looking good. Just FYI, it's probably going to end up sitting there and making this huge embarrassing uh, system for itself that doesn't really go anywhere, but that's just the normal thing about you know 151. The thing that's the issue is it's negative, so you can pull the imaginary number out in front. So you end up with negative 7 plus or minus i times the square root of 151 over 10. And since 7 and 10 don't reduce, and since you don't have anything on the uh, square on the uh, irrational term anyway, that uh, the imaginary term anyway, you're pretty much done. So one of your answers would be negative 7 plus i times the square root of 151 over 10, and the other would be negative 7 minus i times the square root of 151 over 10. So let's just check that answer, to make sure that I didn't think, forget anything. Nope, I'm good to go. You may ask yourself, you ever miss them? Yes, I will miss them occasionally. Sometimes I end up keeping them in the videos and sometimes I don't. But anyway, in this one, this is the last one. It's just another one where you need to move things over to one side or the other. So in this case, I'm going to go... By the way, most of the time I miss them, it's because um, just some careless mistake, because I make them too. That's why I'm so adamant about you making sure that you don't. Don't be a mistake maker as I am. I'm going to move this over. Now I finally have my zero by itself. End up with 5k squared. And remember, these two are not like terms, so there's nothing. Uh, I could combine the 8k squared minus 3 squared because they're like terms. The k is not, so it just kind of shows up as an uninvited party guest. My a in this situation would be 5. My b is 2. And my c is negative 5. Now, ready to write the equation now? There's that. And then uh, negative b is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 5. And once again, the negative plays an important role here, because if it wasn't negative, you're going to end up with another imaginary number. 2 times 5. So let's pop out this section under here, just so I can have a better look at it. I end up with 4, but then I have negative 4 times 5 times negative 5, which is positive 100. So 4 plus 100. So 104. Anyway, um, so I'm going to do negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 104 over 10. And the I should say with the square root of 104, uh, it has a square in it because 104 divided by 4 is equal to 26. 
So I'm going to treat this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 26. And the square root of 4 is, of course, 2, so 2 times the square root of 26. That's where this next step's coming from, just in case you were wondering where I got this. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 26 over 10. Now I can reduce this because I have a 2 that goes into negative 2, 2, and 10. All those are reducible. So for my final answer, I might say something along the lines of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 26, because the 2 would reduce to 1, over 5. And you could go ahead and do them as separate ones and put them in uh, your curvy brackets if you want. Negative 1 plus the square root of 26 over 5 and negative 1 minus the square root of 26 over 5 and uh, you end up with your final answer. But that's it really. Not a huge you know deal that you couldn't work with or whatever. So uh, solving the using the quadratic equation is great because in almost every in every situation you could think of you can use it. But as you could have seen by one of the questions, it's, always, it's not always the best thing to use because if you can get it done easier and faster, that's what you should do. But uh, just make sure that you uh, handle all the little nitpicky negatives and everything in a proper fashion and give yourself something to look at by writing some things down and you'll be just fine.